Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Carbs and Bars. Um, for those of you who is new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that I'm uploading every Thursday morning. Um, today, I'm going to share with you the latest update from the conference that I have attended in October 2019. So the topic that I'm going to share with you today is how to give your insulin or GLP-1 injection correctly. So the guidelines that I'm using is coming from the Forum for Injection Technique and then Trend uh, UK. So I have the insulin um, pen here, the training pen, and this is where I'm going to show you how to inject the insulin. And I have some disposable needle. So the recommended by um, trend and then forum for injection technique is um, the size of the needle is at least four to six millimeter. So it's quite thin. And also I have the diagram here. The diagram for the abdomen, as you can see, there is like a polka dots. So basically, so you have this side. You have to, if this is your abdomen, this is the belly button. So you have to split your abdomen into four quadrants. So what is recommended here, so you don't forget, and also to prevent the lipohypertrophy and better absorption for insulin. So for example, in week one, you go this side, and then week two, the bottom, and then week three here or week four here so it's up to you you can either use each um, side so it's up to you which what side you prefer and similar with your tie so if this is my tie look for the fatty side around your tie so both um, legs here yeah? so if this is your tie you just imagine you have like 14 polka dots here so basically it's about almost an inch from the last injection so for example sunday here sunday you started here and then saturday friday and then monday from the bottom or if you like you can start from the top so monday tuesday and then sunday the bottom so basically, you just give an inch distance from top to bottom and then inch distance in between, as you can see here. And for the abdomen as well, if you have some stoma bag or you have some contractions around the abdomen or you have an operation, so obviously don't inject, don't use those sites. So just go to the area that... You don't have anything on the side so but it's similar here is about an inch distance yeah so the reason for this um, advice to follow this is to prevent the um, lipohydro hypertrophy which is especially it's happening when you've been on insulin or GLP-1 for such a long time so it happens that um, if you are just injecting into one area, for example, just here, because it's easy. So if you're just jabbing there constantly, over time, there is some lumpy, um, fluidy, or it's like an insect bite that's appearing there. I have seen some that it's uh, like a ball. So it's about like this size in the abdomen. So we haven't noticed that um, this uh, particular client, um, he didn't notice that those bulging in his abdomen is called high lipohypertrophy or it's called, uh, basically it's just accumulations of fluid, insulin in that area over time. So the signs and symptoms that um, giving you when you have some lipohypertrophy is when your blood sugar um really high and then all in a sudden is dropping because uh, it depends which site you inject so if you're injecting the insulin in the good site 
probably your uh, your blood sugar would go down. But if you are injecting into the lipohypertrophy site or the uh, where the um, like lumpy area, so your insulin is not absorbing very well. So it could absorb uh, quickly or it doesn't absorb as it should be. Therefore, your blood sugar is quite erratic. So you will um, see when the blood sugar is about 15 and then all in a sudden you drop down to 3. So, and you don't know, you, 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 you remember that you had something to eat. So that is the sign that um, there is some absorption going on in your um, skin. Um, so, if this is, for example, this is your insulin. You just take the paper off and then you screw it until it's a little tight but not too tight because uh, later on you have difficulty taking it off so you that is just the needle is very tiny so for i have four millimeter here therefore if you have four millimeter so what you have to do if you are new to insulin what you have to do is to check that the insulin is uh, not expired and the consistency as well if this is um, like analogs or the new insulin if it's not mixed usually is clear so what you have to do just check and then before your injection each injection i would suggest to dial two units so each click correspond to uh, one unit so if you have hard of hearing some patient they just listen to the click so like this so that is two units so before you inject something to yourself you dial two units just to check the needle is working and also there is some bubbles at the tip of the pen that you cannot see so you just throw that away so i can see something is dropping there so it means the bubbles is out and then also the needle is not blocked so i can guarantee that the insulin that i'm going to give to myself is um good amount so if your um diabetes practitioner um instructed you to start let's say 10 units so you just dial 10 units so about 10 clicks and then 90 degrees you hold the pen like you're gonna punch somebody and then you hold the pen 90 degrees is straight so the abdomen is quite good for um, quick acting insulin so it could be Novo Rapid or a Pedra or Umalo so for after meals so obviously you want your insulin to um, bring down your blood sugar after eating so when your meal is ready on the table or about 10 to 15 minutes you can inject your insulin like this 90 degrees and then in and then you start pressing it until the number has gone back to zero so once the number has gone back to zero now you can start counting one to ten so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then while you're still pressing the insulin here with your tongue and then you pull like this the reason for asking you to count one to ten because if you don't count one to ten the insulin is still dribbling here so in reality you are not getting the exact amount of insulin that you've been prescribed so that's it and then just to remove the needle you just unscrew it and then everything goes in the sharps bin the needle and the insulin pen that you already open you can store this at room temperature so if you have some children at home or grandchildren it's best if you keep the insulin on top of the cupboard and it is valid for 30 days after you open the insulin pen and if your um, pharmacist give you the reserve those reserve pen i would ask you to keep those in the fridge and then once the one that you already opened is finished, you can take out the reserved insulin pen in the uh, fridge 
and leave it out for about an hour before you start using. The reason for that, if you inject the insulin that is quite cold, it's quite painful because you can feel the coldness in your skin. So that is the reason for that. And for the needles, we always advise the needle is single use only. Because if you don't replace your needle, um, after a few hours, if you injected your breakfast, you have a new needle, and then before lunch, you're going to use the same needle as well, there is some blood that is getting dry on the tip of the pen. So when you inject that into your skin, those um, dry blood will actually be quite painful to inject. So it's always advisable to use the needle um, single only, single use. So that is um, um, the technique on how to inject the insulin. And the Thai, I would advise the Thai to use if you are on long-acting insulin. So there are a few um, names for long-acting insulin. The popular is Lantus. Um, Abasaglar, Lebimir, or um, like Yumulin Eye. So those are um, to be given in the Thai because the long-acting insulin, we would like those to act slowly. So we don't want that to, to be absorbed quickly, but for the fast-acting insulin or your meal insulin, it's advisable around the tummy. And I think that's it for now. Uh, watch out for my next video. I will um, discuss about um, some tips or guidelines once you, um, you are on insulin. So what you have to do and for example, you have to inform your uh, insurance, driving insurance or to inform the VLA and what blood sugar uh, would you um, start driving. So I will discuss those in my next video. Bye for now and don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.